Uh, this video we're going to talk about uh, chapter 2 part 2 this video might be a little bit long so uh, I'm gonna split it into uh, two parts uh, just in case it uh, exceeds 15 minutes length my name is Nail Herzala to start with uh, to start with we're gonna talk about uh, the sum of products then we're gonna talk about uh, the products of sum and uh, then in the third uh, in the third topic we're going to talk about the conversion between both either the sum of products to product of sum or products of sum to sum of products and finally uh, we're going to introduce the four new gates logical gates to prof uh, to start with a brief from uh, last videos uh, where we introduced both the max terms and min terms uh, remember the max terms we used to use the max uh, the capital M to uh, to uh, uh, to refer to max term and small m to refer to a min term uh, for max terms we use the or relationship between the inputs so in, in other words we have uh, if we have three inputs X and Y and Z we have or in between while for the min term, we have the AND in between the inputs. For max terms, we have the AND among the terms. In other words, let's say that this is uh, a max term and this is a max term. The relationship between these two terms are or is, uh, is AND. While in the min term, the OR is the relationship between the terms. And finally, uh, remember we used to select uh, those rows where f is equal to zero to come up with a uh, max term. And uh, for min term, we used to select where f is equal to one. Just to just to remind you again, uh, let's assume that we have this output f, and we have three inputs x, y, and z. To find to find the f or the, or the simplified form of f uh, in terms of min term we used to look for where f is equal to 1 and, f and get the min terms for instance here we have 1 and 2 and 3 4 we have 4 rows where f is equal to 1 so the first row you remember we start with m0 and then m1 2 3 and so on until m of 7 so for f is equal to 1 we have m of 1 and we come up with f m1 we have here m equal to 3 so for that we have m3 and so on for and so on for m6 and m7 again uh, to know what is m1 m1 is equal to x prime and y prime and z for a quick thing you you know for three inputs one is equal to zero zero one so if if x is zero then we get x prime if y is zero we get y prime and if one is one we get z so the result is x prime y prime and z here we have x prime y prime and z and so on for three to do it again for three three is equal to zero 
1, 1. So for 0, it's x prime. For 1, it's y. And for z, is equal to z or z. So we have x prime, y, and z. And so on for m6 and m7. Now, in other words, we have f is equal to the sum of products or sum of min terms. The min terms are 1, 3, 6, and 7. On the other hand, oh, no, uh, before, before we jump to the max terms, let's try to simplify the min terms. So for min terms, we have the same function that we, re we got uh, in the previous slide. Uh, now let's try to simplify it. Instead of designing this, we might end up with 1, 2, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, probably 9 or 10 gates. 10 gates. If it is of two inputs, max. Okay? However, let's try to simplify it before we jump into, into designing it. Uh, here we take the x prime and z as a common terms x prime and z common terms so we end up with x prime z and in between this y prime and this y same thing we get the x y as common term and then we we end up with z prime and z you remember the y prime and prime is equal to one so this is equal to one and this is again equal to one so the result is x prime and z or x m and y. To design it, we end up with 1, 2, 3, and 4 gates. 4 gates. This is one way of designing the function f. Now, jumping into the max terms, where we need to have the products of sum. The same table, truth table. Uh, however, this time we're going to we're going to take where f is equal to 0, where f is equal to 0. And again, we see those rows, we're talking about big M or capital M. So this one is M, capital M of 0, and this one capital M of 2, because this is 1, and this is 2, this is 3, and this is M, capital M of 4, and this is capital M of 5. So to, to, to sum them up, actually we don't sum them, we add them together. Remember, this is we are talking about max terms. So the relationship between the terms is and. So M0 is equal to X, Y, Z. M2 is equal to X, Y prime and Z. Just to get the same thing out as we talked about in the min terms, where we have uh, the small m represented by x and y z and in between there's a and relationship right now for the max terms we have we have or between them and we have and between the terms so or between the terms between the inputs of the terms and and between the terms themselves uh, let's say m0 m0 is what M0 is equal to 0, 0, 0 for three inputs. For max terms, whenever we have 0, it's not primed. Whenever we have 1, it's primed. It's exactly the opposite of min term. So for this case, when we have 0, 0, 0, we have x or y or z. Let's say for m, m5, m5, 5 is equal to one zero one so one it's not x right now because we're talking about max terms so it is x prime or y because it's zero here or exactly z prime so here this is x prime y and z prime this is product of sum product of sum of zero max term two max term four max term and five max term. Now, again, we do the same thing as we did in the min terms. 
uh, we try to simplify the function before we jump into designing it. Because if we want to design it as is, we might end up with 10 gates or 9 gates or 8 gates. While simplifying it will reduce the number of gates that we're going to use. So for this one, we remove the we remove the brackets. That is, we distribute the x over this one. We distribute the y over this one. We we distribute the z one over this one. So the whole thing. And the same thing we do it. But since we have four max terms, it's going to be a little bit long. So don't use max terms as an advice. Don't use max terms unless you have a low number of zeros. Low number of zeros for the output function means that we have one or two max terms. But if we have four max terms, it's going to be a little bit long to, dis to simplify it. So for that, we advise you only use max terms when we have few f's for the output. Now, let's talk about the relationship between the max term and min terms. Again, the min terms, small m, we have the sum of products. While the max terms, the big M or capital M, we have the product of sums. So, how can we refer to the function or represent the function f in terms of sum of products or product of sum? It's easy. If we have f is equal to the sum of products, this is min term. This is min term. And the product of sum, this is max term. If you see, for x and y, z, we have from 0 to what? to 7 from 0 to what to 7 terms so if the if function f is represented by the sum of products of 1 3 6 7 the remaining numbers from 0 to 7 are the sum of products so we have the sum uh, or we have the product of sum of 0 2 4 5 so it's kind of like you know, the the complement numbers of the terms Again, we have to note that if assume that we want the complement, you know, the, the negation, the complement, the negation, which is not, of the min terms, it's equal to the other numbers. So, if we want the not of the min term 1, 3, 6, and 7, it is the min terms of 0, 2, 4, 5. To explain this further, Let's have this M1. M1, you know, M1 is equal to what? 0, 0, 1. So it is X prime, Y prime, and Z. So it's X prime, Y prime, and Z. And this is the nut, and this is the nut. Uh, same nut. You remember the nut is distributed to all the terms inside. Not only the X, Y, Z, but also the relationship between these. So we distribute over here, we get the x, y, and z, and then the not, uh, the and is converted to or. So again, what is this x, y, and z prime? It's equal to, for the maximum, it's equal to 0, 0, and 1. And this is equal to 1, that is, it is the max term of 1. Now, uh, as simple, so again we go back to the M1, M3, M6, if we are taking the nut the, or the prime of it, so it is the maximum or the capital M, the capital, uh, the capital M1, the capital M2, uh, 3, and the capital M6, and the capital M7. Is this, so the numbers are remaining the, uh, remains the same, however, instead of small m or uh, small letter m, we have the capital letter M. So, in other words, we have the product of sum of 1, 3, 6, and 7. Okay, now let's talk about conversion. Assume that you have a function represented by certain terms. It's not necessarily equal to, to a maximum or capital M or small m. How are you going to represent it in terms of sum of products or product of sum. Let's take example 2.5 in your book. Example 2.5 in your book says that we have a function which is f is equal to x, y or x prime, z. How are we gonna 
represent this function in terms of either sum of products or product of sum. Let's take this to start with. Let's take this to start with. So product of sum here again we have the x, y or x prime z. You remember the product of sum? Product of sum used to be in big M's which is x, y, z and they have a relationship between them or whether x prime or whatever it is doesn't matter. But here we have the three inputs and we have or in between. To compare it with this function, to compare it with this function, we don't have three terms, num that's number one, uh, or three inputs, and we don't have the or in between. So how are we going to do it? How are we going to change it to something like this? Take the first product, take the first product, x and y, and distribute the x and y over this. You remember? Remember, let's say we have A or B and C. This is equal to distributing A over B and distributing A over C. We have A or B dot A or C. Remember this theorem? Okay. So it's basically we're going to do the same thing. Here we have X, Y as one unit. And we want to distribute it over x prime and over z. So we have x, y, or z, or x prime. Here, distribute the first term, this one. And then x, y, or the other term, which is z. Okay, we are coming close. Now, do the same thing. Take this x prime and distribute it over this and over this. So we get x or x prime and y or x prime doesn't matter x prime or y or x or y or x prime either way doesn't matter which one is first and the same thing z we distribute over x and we distribute it over y and we get x or z and y over or z now we're coming close to the to this you know to this shape or similar to this shape okay now, you know, x or x, x prime is equal to 1, so we remove this. Now, y or x prime. Now, you remember that we need the three inputs to be in each term. So, what we do here, we, what's missing in this bracket? We have, the a, we have the y, we have the x, and what's missing is the z. So, we or it with z and z prime. You know, oring... First of all, what's the value of this one? The value of this one is zero. Z and Z prime is equal to zero always. So, by ordering this with with, Z, with zero, it's the same thing. You know, ordering any, you know, let's say X or zero is equal to X. It's the same thing. So, as if we did nothing. However, all what we need to introduce the Z to this term. And the same thing for the second bracket. What's missing is y, so we or it with y, y prime. And what's missing in the third bracket is x, so we or it with x and x prime. Now, again, this, considering this as one unit and distributing it over the z and distributing it over z prime, we get x, this is one unit, or z, and this is one unit, or z prime. Again, we do the same thing. We consider this uh, one unit, and we distribute over y, then over y prime. So we have x or z or y, and then x or z or y prime. And the same thing for the third bracket. So, in other words, we have now the, the max terms. However, before we jump into the max terms, we know that I think we have duplicates. So, let's say, comparing this one with this one, they're the same x z or y x or z or y or, or or y or z or x so this is the same so again if we have a and a this is equal to a okay so removing this and uh, we have y z on x prime do we have something similar y 
z this is the same thing and this is equal to this one so we would uh, we cancel this so what we are re remaining with these three with these four this one this one this one and that one okay and these are basically are equal to m4 and m5 m0 and m2 or in other words m0 and m2 max term 4 and max term 5 in other words our function is equal to the product of sum of 0 2 4 5 and again as we know the relationship between the sum of products and product sum it is the other numbers for the sum of products is 1 3 6 7 by this we get the product of sum or sum of product note that in this function in this uh, method we start with the product of sum what if we want to start with the sum of products for the sum of products starting with the with the sum of products here we have the function original function x the same th function instead of of going first to the sum of products let's go to the uh, product sum let's go to the sum of products okay we we used this one in the previous slide and let's go in, uh, directly to the sum of products and from the sum of products we go to the product of sum okay now remember the sum of products is equal to m something let's say m1 plus and we are talking about now min terms not max terms so these are small m's and in between there are or the m sm small m is equal to let's say x y and z prime and stuff like that okay remember those so we need we need this function to look like this function we need this function to look like this function now unfortunately the first term we have x and y what's missing is z so what do we do x and y we end it with z or z prime remember this one this one is equal to one so ending anything a and one is equal to a doesn't matter so as if we are doing nothing so x y and z or z prime same thing for the second term we have x prime and z we and it with y or y prime and this y or y prime is equal to one now we remove the brackets now we remove the brackets so it's x y z you know we split this x y into z and z prime so x y z or x y z prime and the same thing for the rest these exactly look like min terms what are these min terms you know if you want to reorder them you said you know let's say x prime instead of z y we have y z it's the same thing doesn't matter the order is not important we are we are saying a b is equal to b a doesn't matter whether a is first or b is first okay these are m7 small m again we are talking about min terms m6 m3 and m1 so this is the sum of products of 1 3 6 7 or the product sum of the complement numbers now we've talked about how to design our function using the min terms or how to design our function using the max terms now let's talk about or let let me allow me to introduce few other gates or logical gates we're going to talk about four new gates in this slide and then and the slide that follows uh, we are going to talk about the nand remember the only difference between this one and that one is this small circuit between the difference between this gate which is called NAND and the AND gate the old AND gate is only the circle circle is kind of like you know represent by NOT this circle is represented by NOT so it's the same thing X and Y first AND it and then invert it so X and Y by ending x and y 0 and 0 is equal to 0 inverting the output 0 is equal to 1 so it's exactly the opposite of and and same thing for or we have nor when we put this small circle which represent by not so the function 
between x and or is or x and y is equal to or while it is inverted after it so 0 and 0 is equal to 0 or 0 is equal to 0 the inversion of 0 is equal to 1 so 0 and 1 is equal to 1 and the inversion of 1 uh, of 1 is equal to 0 and so on now talking about the x or and x nor this is kind of like you know a new gate totally new gate uh, it's basically it says this is the shape of it and this is the symbol so basically it says this is the symbol it says only when it is different only when the inputs are different the output is one only when the inputs are different the output is one while the XNOR or it's called the equivalence it's called the equivalence only when the two inputs are equal the output is one only when the two inputs are equal the output is one again these gates NAND, NOR, XOR or XNOR the minimum number of gates, number, num, minimum number of inputs, number of inputs is equal to two. So you might have three inputs x or. Uh, our job here is to uh, prove whether the three inputs x or is equal to two of two inputs x or. Let's say uh, if we have here f one. And let's assume that this is uh, x and z, for instance. These two inputs are x or first. And then we have this y, x or with this. So whether f1 is equal to f2. The question is, is f1 is equal to f2? One of the methods to prove this is using the truth table. For instance, we want to use the uh, the x, y, and let's assume that we are going to put uh, z here, just for the sake of uh, making it closer because we have this x and, and z together. Okay, now the uh, all the options of x, z, and y is equal to let's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. How many options do we have? We have 8 options. Uh, 1, 1, 0, and finally 1, 1, 1. Now, if we want to uh, take the first one, which is x, x or with z. So, the first one, x, x or with z. Remember the x or? The x or is whenever both terms are whenever both inputs are uh, different then the output is is one so we have here when x and z is equal to zero zero so the output is zero again the one zero here one here one and here one one zero and zero remember the x and z are different are the same so they are the same so the output is zero okay now, taking this with the y, so y now xr with this output, so f2 here, f2 is equal to what? f2 is equal to whenever these zeros here and 0 are different, the output is 1. So this is 0, so this is 1, and this is 1, this is 0, because you have one and one okay and we have one and we have zero and we have zero and finally we have one okay now now we got f2 now how about f1 f1 let's assume that we have x which is x or y x or z is equal to f1 by natural, we, we use the first two, and then we XOR it with, uh, with Z. So, X, now we have, let's say, X and XOR of Y. Again, we do the same thing. Whenever X and Y, whenever X and Y are different, 
we have one and whenever they are the same we have zero so here we have one the second one the first one zero and and so on okay just for the sake of uh, simplicity we continue the same thing and finally we XOR it with Z so this result and this one we XOR it we get F1 we get F1 now we, you will find out that F1 is exactly the same as F2. So 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. And this proves this. So in other words, this one is the same as this one. So in the order of X, Y, Z, or Y, Z, X, or whatever it is, the order is not important in the XOR. With this, we come to the conclusion of part 2 of uh, chapter two next time we're going to meet for chapter three and we're going to discuss the mapping or how to find the easy or the fastest way to find the function and design it thank you and take care